Right. Our phone in today is dedicated to those experiencing grief. And we're joined by Annabelle Croft, who tragically lost her lovely husband, Mel Coleman, last year following a short battle with cancer. Yeah, she's here to answer your calls and share her advice alongside Deirdre. Good morning to you both. And Hello. Oh, thank you. Hello. Thank you yeah. for coming Lovely in to, to be, be with you. you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you share... Yeah, it helps, doesn't it, with the, with, with the grief Absolutely, process? Absolutely, because, you know, I lost my husband just over a year ago, so we, we really do share some experience here. Yeah, well, we're going to go straight to um, our first caller sure. uh, today. Um, Joan is on the line. Um, Joan, are, are you there? Yes, I am. And, and what would you like to ask the ladies? Um, I lost my husband um, eight weeks ago, um, and I'm not coping with grief at all. Um, Picked him, had to pick his ashes up last on Valentine's Day, um, but at the last minute I couldn't do it, so I had to get my daughter-in-law to to pick it up for us. Um, and I've got them home now, but I'm not coping at all with it. Oh, I'm. Oh, shall I pick up? Yeah. Um, Joan, I'm so sorry for your loss, and I can feel your pain, and I'm going through it exactly the same as you, but you're even more recent um, than Mel, who died last May. And if it's any consolation, I have not picked up my hus husband's ashes yet, and I'm, what, eight, nine months in. And it was just the finality of knowing that my husband, who was such a vibrant person, a vibrant character, with such a great sense of humour, was suddenly going to be in this urn or this box and I still can't bring myself to do it. And sometimes I'm driving around in my car and I'm quite near the funeral directors and I think, shall I just go and park the car and pick him up? But I just can't do it. So uh, I absolutely feel for you. And, you know, you are right in the midst of the most rawest grief possible. And, um, you know, the thing that helped me the most, I hope you have great friends around you that can pick you up when you're feeling as low as you're feeling but also that it's OK to feel the way you're feeling. And sometimes I go home and I call it the geyser springs that just come out of the ground like um, a pressure reliever. And sometimes I'm at home and I'm just uncontrollably sobbing and I get it out and it's good that I, there's no one around me because I just get it all out of me and I feel so much better when it's, it's passed. But you will continue to feel like that for a long time. And I'm not sure that we ever get over what we're suffering, but you just hope that the that the tears don't come quite as frequently as where you're in the midst of it right now. And, um, you know, if it's anything else that I would... I'm sure that Deirdre has lots to offer you, but, um, you know, for me, dancing, walking in the fresh air, using your body, doing some exercise, and just kind of releasing some of these thoughts and emotions are the only way that I'm getting through it. Um, but, you know, it's very raw, and, and I totally feel where you're at. It is, t it is really tough, Jane, and I'm, you know, further down the tracks, it's just over a year since I lost my husband, and all I can say, I still experience the geezer moments, you know, it's... But there's nothing wrong with crying. It is nature's way of healing, in a way, and healing our emotions. So shed your tears when you feel the need, even if other people are around, you know. Goodness me, you've lost your partner. You know, that is such a massive, massive blow in life, and I think often... Until it happens to us, we don't realise just how bad it is and how extreme it is. To pick up on the idea of the ashes, though, try and build that into being something good, you know, because start making plans with the family for what you're going to do with those ashes. You know, have, you can create some sort of ceremony. I know with my husband, we had a, a lovely scattering of the ashes. We were all together. It was very meaningful. We've got some lovely photos from it, which are, which are a comfort. So try and get some plans in there about how you're going to deal with that. Because I think science people do get rather trapped with the ashes at home, you know, and then and they, they sort of can't move on. And as, as Annabelle said, it is, in a way, you're sort of shying away from a reality which, at one stage or another, it is better if you start accepting that. So make some plans. And as Annabelle said, that really applies to the days as well. Every day, try and, have, try and see somebody so that you do talk to somebody so that you're not just spending a whole day alone and make plans with the family. And look after yourself as well. Try and eat proper meals, decent food, get out for fresh air. You know, there's lots of... Very, very serious research mm. which shows that just doing something like getting out for a walk early in the morning actually mm. really helps mood and guard against depression. So it's not a facile thing, it's a very important thing yeah. to do. But there is no easy answer. It's going to go on feeling painful, but you can look after yourself. Yeah, I also think that um, 
You know, I know that my husband would not have wanted me to just be so in a morbid state all day long, so I try to remind myself that my oh, husband Joan. had the most wonderful sense of humour mm. and verve for life. And so when I get up in the morning, if I'm feeling a bit low, as Deirdre said, I'll go and do some exercise or go for a walk, get the fresh air, but I'll put some makeup on, I'll try to make myself look as best I can to make myself feel better. And then I'm always reminding myself that Mel would never have wanted me to sink. And so I try to, I mean, a lot of people would advise me to say, you know, try to think of the better memories rather than the traumatic ones. And I'm at that balance where I have crossovers between the trauma in the hospital and then the better times. But I'm trying to let the better memories and the positive memories and the lovely humorous times that we had try to overtake those times. I think that is also like a natural progression mm. that happens during grief. But also, I, I want to say, Joan, I'll come and talk to you some more That'd off be air because I think mm. you're distressed. And also, I just want to say for everybody, Cruise gives some brilliant counselling for people who've lost, lost um, someone who's very dear to them. And also, <coughs> there are lots of helplines on our website, yeah. OK? But I'll come and talk and, to you some and more. Joan, the fact air. you're able to talk about it and yeah. come on air and talk about it shows you're taking those early <coughs> steps. So yeah, and it helps. Thank you. You're helping other people too. I'm yeah. shocked to hear you can't get a counsellor after eight weeks. Yeah. And, and I would take the advice from Deirdre. Do talk to her after it, and she lives. Yeah, yeah. you a big hug yeah. and a really, really oh, big hug you. and lots of love. Um, Okay. This is this is this is so tricky. All this stuff. Um, Shelley's on the line. Good morning, Shelley. We're so sorry for your tragic loss. I mean, it really is awful. You lost your 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 19-year-old daughter just 20 weeks ago, and we're just so so sorry for you. Um, the ladies are here to help you out. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm just so heartbroken. Um, every day is is so hard. Um, she was so brave and so so amazing throughout the two years of her, her illness. And I looked after her 24 hours a day for those whole two years. And now I just feel so lost. And so I go into a room and kiss her good morning and say good night to her every night. And I, I just don't know how, how to, to deal with this. I think, I mean, losing a child is generally acknowledged. It is the most painful loss. And we, we so feel for you, because goodness knows the losses we've gone through have been painful enough. But to imagine losing a child is just horrendous. And our, our hearts really go out to you. Um, there's an organisation called the Compassionate Friends who specialise in helping parents who've been bereaved through losing their children. And their, their motto is, no loss so sad. And I think that is really true. So, you know, we're reaching out to you. Mm. We'll, we'll stay in touch with you as well and, and see how you're getting on. So I'm so sorry. I wish there was some magic wand I could wave to make this OK, but there really isn't. So it's going to be painful. But I hope, you know, you heard what we said before about mm. staying in touch with friends, reach out to your friends. Have you found, are they able to be really supportive? Have you found some of them are rather sort of unnerved by the extent of your loss? I've got some, or well, we've got some really good friends good. that have helped us. And they're good. there for us. Great. But there are other people that, that don't know how to deal with it and yeah. don't know how to speak to us. Yeah, which is really hard, isn't it? And you find you're the bereaved person and you're having to try and make them feel comfortable. Yeah. The other thing, because I, I want Annabelle to talk us about, but the other thing I'd just sort of say is try and think maybe of some project that your daughter would have really loved and identify with that it could be raising funds for a charity that she'd have felt close to or, you know, getting, doing something that she'd have been proud of you for, whether it's you know, getting into exercise. Just think of something that she would have loved you doing and do it, you know, because that will be preserving her spirit and it's a way of expressing what she would have brought to this world on yeah. after her passing, OK? Yeah. I, I feel your pain terribly and, I'm, uh, as, as uh, Deirdre just said, I can't imagine... You know, I've lost my husband of 36 years, but, um, you know, I can't imagine what it must feel like to have lost a child. And I was there in the hospital when Mel's parents were there watching their son die, which was absolutely traumatic and horrific. Um, but, as Deirdre said, you know, you, you are in the midst of it and there is no magic wand that can be waved for this. And I think it's good that you talk to her. I mean, I used to make my husband a cup of tea and we'd have tea in bed every morning. And I sometimes... I don't make him a cup of tea now, but I sort of t sometimes go to bed at night and I just talk to him. And then in the morning I talk to him as well and I sometimes say, where are you? You know, and I try to remember all of the fun times and the laughter that we had. And I try to, as I said before, just have 
really positive memories, but also I like to talk about Mel with people around me and I never want to ever not stop, stop talking about my husband. And I also feel it helps people around me to not feel uncomfortable talking about him. So if I bring up his name constantly with all my friends and people around me, then I realise that that's going to help them as well. And it sometimes alleviates all of the stress and the pain around it. But of course, we're all of us who are going through this, going to keep having moments when I'm trying to show photographs of him. I want people to know about his character. I wish people had met him sometimes. And sometimes just looking at the photographs and videos just literally set me off. And then I'm, I let the moment pass, but I just get it out. I'm never embarrassed about it. I just think, you know, we must never stop talking about our loved ones. So, so keep doing it and keep talking to her. And I'll come and, again, I'm going to come and talk to you more off air because I can hear you're upset. Um, you. And, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk some more off air as well. 20 mm. weeks, Shelley. Yeah. It's, 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 it's early very days. early. It's very raw for you. Early days. Um, right, Shelley, stay on the line Sorry, and, and Deirdre will talk to you after the show. Um, uh, next on the line, we've got David. Uh, David, are you there? I am, yes. Good morning. David, um, what would you like to ask the ladies? Um, I lost my partner very suddenly about five, six weeks ago. And being so young myself, having so much less in my life, it's quite daunting thinking I've got to go through life without that one person I love. And everyone says things get better. I just want to know, is that true? And how do I cope with that, really? I'm so, I'm so sorry um, for your loss. Um, I, I'm not sure whether I think it's ever going to get better. You know, at the moment, mm -hmm. I feel like, how could anybody replace what Mel was to me? And I'm sure you're feeling exactly the same way. All I hope is that I'm going to try to go forward in the most positive way that I can to live out the rest of my life for my children and for our family. Um, and to keep his memory going. And at the moment, you're right in the midst of the worst grief and the most rawest state that you could be in. Um, yeah. I mean, I I'm not sure that we ever want to move on. I keep hearing lots of words associated with grief, and it was something I never understood before. But I don't think you ever will move on, really. I think you can move your life forward as I said, in the most positive way that you can and take every day as it comes. But I think I've met people who've come up to me saying they lost their loved ones, you know, 20, 30 years ago, and it still comes up like a big wave and it's still so raw. So what, what would you like to Yes, I think, I mean, obviously, it's so, so raw and so early for you. And I think when people use, phrase, use phrases like, you know, it'll all get better or moving on, it's often about making themselves feel mm. better. I mean, they, they yeah. do mean well to, towards you, but they're just, it's very hard for the people around us to live with the absolute intensity of the loss we've gone through. And it's really hard. Sometimes it just in terms of like just dealing with it, it can help you to have a phrase ready, you know. Mm. So you can say, you know, given what's happened, I'm coping or, or whatever it is. Yeah. But you, you, I'm afraid, are going to have to accept that this is going to be a really tough year at the very least i think maybe we don't move on we don't move past it but we learn to live alongside our loss mm. and i think that's that's really important and i think that will happen to you but you're in such an early stage at the moment as i said there are lots of different um cancer organizations on our website so it's worth looking at that but again i'll come and talk to you off air because this yeah, is such you. an emotional subject, and I think all of us affected by it have just got so many raw emotions. There isn't anything easy. And you'll probably find you go... Through, you know, there are these known different stages of grief. You know, there's feeling sad, there's feeling angry, there's denial, just trying to pretend nothing's happened. There are all these different stages, and we can be really taken aback, you know, by how we feel. So it helps to know a bit mm. about that, and I can certainly talk more um, about that. I, I think, yeah. it, it, it's, so, it's so brave of all, all of you to mm. ring in Absolutely. and share your feelings and your emotions and you as yeah. well, Annabella, of course, well. Deirdre as well, because people can relate to you and there's a yeah. lot of people out there, we can't get to all the calls, Helen and Sarah and Julie, yeah. all of you suffering at the moment mm. and hearing your stories and all the callers' stories too. So, so important because they must yeah. feel so lonely at the moment. The key message seems to be talk 
about the person you've lost and talk to people and don't I just hide so. away. Is that, yeah. is that the key? Like, yeah, really use your friends and family. Yeah. yeah. And well, I also think, for me, one of the things a lot of people have said is they felt terribly guilty if they could ever feel laughter or happiness ever mm. again mm. because you feel guilt. Yeah. But actually, I have laughed. And I laughed with Johannes a lot on Strictly. He made me laugh. He made me feel so much better. But I think Mel would want me to laugh. He had a great sense of humour and I want to remember that. And I would love everybody out there who's suffering from so much grief to not feel guilty about finding happiness again because you must find happiness because, um, you know, to be morbid for the rest of your yeah. life would be a terrible thing. And I don't think that your loved ones or your partner was, would ever want that for any of you. So I hope that's a message yeah. that would be nice to take forward is to try to find when is the right time to find some happiness. And your lovely again. daughter is in with you today. Oh, She's yeah. been holding She's your been hand amazing. all morning and keeping an eye. Yeah, yeah, Lily's yeah. been amazing. Well, Lily, my, yeah. all of my children, Amber, Charlie and Lily, have been amazing. And I've, I sometimes wallow in my own grief and I forget that my children are suffering as well. And so I must remember that, you know, we need to all support each other and look after each other. Yeah. I mean, I had no idea what grief was before I'd been through it. And I realise that so many people are suffering from such terrible grief. So we need to support each other. Beautiful mm. words. Thank you. Oh, thank Thanks you, Emma. Thank you, thank you, Deirdre. Together. That was lovely. Love that was to really beautiful. Thanks to all of you for thank calling you. in Good as well. If here. you've been affected by anything we've talked about today, <laughs> please head to our website where you'll find various help yeah, lines there. There's lots more stuff.